It's 3.45 on a Monday morning and it's time to get up for work. As you can see, we are very much still renovating our house, but we have made a lot of progress in the last two and a half years that we've had the house. You may remember us having a kitchen like this, well now it looks like this. Admittedly, it doesn't look that much better, but it has so much more potential. Of course, we need a kitchen, so we have temporarily put a kitchen in the garage. And this is where I come to pack up my food for the week and to make those all important cups of tea. Two for me and a cup of coffee for Ryan. Then I go up and straighten my hair, which is the only time I will do it this week. And I will drink my cup of tea while Ryan is still sleeping. Everything's packed up, ready to go now. And I just need to pack everything in the car and I can go down the yard. Magic. It takes around 40 minutes to get to the yard. And once I'm there, I set about packing all my stuff into the truck. I always bring a bag of spare clothes and some food and water for the week. Do you know what? I've never panic bought anything, but apparently there may be a tea shortage and I cannot live without tea. So I, have, I haven't gone mad, I've just bought an extra packet just to be on the safe side. Right, that is that done. So now I can get on with starting my day. So the first thing I'm going to do to put my digicard in. I confirm that I have been on rest all weekend and then I can get out and start doing my daily checks. When I washed the truck on Friday, I had a good look around the truck, but you may never know what's happened over the weekend that could have gone wrong. So once I've done the daily checks, I need to fill out the daily checks book to prove that I've done it. Luckily what I did is I filled out my ticket for this farm on Saturday because I work Saturday, so I'm ahead of the game. I'm just going to have a little check on the map. So it's just going to be just over an hour and a half to get there. Right, everything is done and put away. So it's now time to go to the farm. And we're going over to Maiden Bradley. And there's Neil Conway getting ready to rock and roll. I head out of the yard, down the lane and towards the M5 where I join the motorway at Junction 28. I'm not on the M5 for too long before I come off at Junction 25 for Taunton where I take the A358 towards Ilminster. Once I get to the roundabout at Ilminster I take the A303 going eastbound. I stay on the A303 for quite some time and go through the roadworks between Poddymore and Spartford. As I come off the A303 towards Maiden Bradley it starts to lighten up a bit. I've booked myself in to get to the farm for quarter past seven, so the mornings are definitely getting lighter. I know that this is a really tight turn into the farm lane, so I give myself plenty of time to do it. And even though this is a dead end lane with not much down this road, I somehow managed to catch two vehicles coming out. And because I took my time turning in and took a big wide swing, we managed to get past each other. Then I can just carry on down the farm lane, hoping that I won't meet anything else. I'm five minutes early and as I swing round into the yard, the farmer is there waiting for me with a full bucket of grain. Now this is something that I definitely like to see first thing on a Monday morning. I can work out where he wants me to park, by where he is parked, and all I need to do is pull forwards on an angle and open my sheet. This is good. Straight in and load it. Perfect. Right, where's my ticket? Right, get that ready for him. So once he's loaded, I'll give him that ticket and he will give me a grain passport. Once I'm loaded, I need to back out onto the lane because there's not enough room in the yard to turn around. The farmer loaded me in just seven minutes, which almost gives Bob Rowe at Gussage St. Michael a run for his money. The farmer also said that he is expecting another truck at half past seven. So my aim is to get up to the end of the road as soon as I can and hope that the other truck will not be early. Luckily, I make it without any complications and no sign of the other lorry at the top of the road as I pull out. In fact, I don't see another bulker on the whole way back to the 303. So my only guess is that it's a truck that is coming from the opposite direction. Either that or they are very, very late. This load is going back to Clumpton, so I basically go back the way that I came. Through the roadworks between Spartford and Poddymore, down the 358 towards the M5. Although as I get to the M5, there is a bit of a wait to get onto the motorway, but that is probably just because it's rush hour. 
I head south on the M5 and make a quick pit stop in Taunton Dean Services as I am running low on fuel. Right, I just need to get myself a shot of fuel. Right, I'm just going to get a shot of fuel. Once I've paid for the fuel, I get back onto the motorway towards Columpton, which only takes me around 20 minutes. When I get into the mill, I pull up at the sampling area. I put my high vis on and get my paperwork ready to take in to the office. Once the chap in the office is happy with my delivery references, he will sample the contents of my trailer using the spear, which is almost like a little hoover that sucks the grain into the office. Once the sample has been collected, the chap in the office will test the wheat to make sure that it is of good quality. He will also weigh me in at this point and if everything is good to go, he will tell me which pit I need to go on. Today I have been lucky and I can go straight on to pit one. Getting this load tipped off straight away is going to help me out massively as today I do have quite a busy day. Once I'm happy with my positioning on the pit, I lift the body up and I let the wheat go down into the pit. This tip will take approximately 30 minutes, which means that I have got time for a little bit of breakfast. You can watch how much I've got on via my onboard weigher. Right, so I've got my porridge and I've got a banana. I've got a knife, but I only use my spoon to eat, so I might as well use my spoon to chop the banana. Whilst I'm waiting for my breakfast to cook, I am just going to ring Wayne's and see what I'm doing next. I've got it down on my app, what I'm doing next, but we just ring up to check to make sure that nothing's changed because this is a job where things change quite quickly. Morning, Jeremy, all right? Hi, all right? I'm tipping at Columpton. Am I still going? To... Keith, you've not changed Gemma at all this morning, have you? Right. Lovely. Cheers, Jeff. Bye. 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 Right, so I am doing the same. Right, put that sat out of the microwave. I've just about got enough time to finish my breakfast before the wheat runs out. So I go to the back, I take my grain sock off, and then I undo my back door just to let the last little bit of wheat out. I make sure that my grain sock is packed away on the side of the trailer, and then I put my body down. And then I can jump in the back and make sure that the trailer is swept out thoroughly. Also sweep the excess wheat into the pit to leave it all neat and tidy. Once I'm happy that I've done everything and everything is packed away securely, I can head back round onto the weighbridge. I get myself weighed out and get my ticket and then I can go on to the next load. I'm just going to pull forward to the weighbridge to make a phone call. Well, the pollard is behind me so... Hello. Hiya, it's Gemma from Wayne's Transport. I'm coming to collect a load of wheat from you. Okay, yes. Um, I should be there about quarter to twelve, if that's okay. Quarter to twelve, that's fine, Gemma, thank you. Right, Gemma. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Right. Easy peasy, learn and squeezy. Let's go. So it's out of the mill and I head towards Honiton on the Clumpton to Honiton Road where I pick up the A30 for about a mile before getting off and heading down the A35. The A35 is quite a long, windy, hilly road but as I'm empty it proves no problem for the Flying Dutchman. It takes me through Bridport and along the south coast until I get to the Dorchester Bypass. I turn off on the Dorchester Bypass and follow the lanes down to the farm. This part of the lane isn't too bad, but then I get to a tricky bit. Trying to get through this bridge is going to be a little bit tight, but I take my time and give myself as much space as I possibly can. And although it is very tight, I did make it through. When I get to the farm, I pull up on the weighbridge and go and see the farmer to get weighed in. The farmer gives me some instructions of where he wants me to park for loading. From where I am sat, I can't see the spot where he wants me to park, but as I back up, it becomes clear where I need to park. So I pull forwards to angle myself in a better position to get into the space where I need to be. And by the time I'm parked, I think the farmer is going to be ready to put in the first bucket. 
I take my sheet off and within minutes of me arriving, I'm already being loaded. I grab a quick snack while he's loading the first bit as I know I won't have chance to have anything to eat in the next couple of hours. I also make sure that everything is right on the passport and that it's complete. As we get to the end of loading, I lift the body up slightly to check the weigher. The farmer will trickle the last bucket into the trailer and I will let him know when I am full up. Then I put my sheet back on and make my way back to the weighbridge. But this time I'm going to reverse onto the weighbridge as it will mean that I'm facing the right way to leave. Luckily, this is a completely flat weighbridge which makes it a lot easier. Well, that's good. I was booked in, or I booked myself in for quarter to 12 and I am leaving here at two minutes past 12. I do Off to Exeter. So it's out of the farm and back down the lanes. There is only one way in and out of this farm in a truck. So I'm heading back the way I came towards the A35. I follow a tractor and trailer down to the bridge and they have absolutely no problem getting over the bridge, unlike me being a lot bigger. So I just take my time and watch as I'm going round, taking up every inch of space that I can. I'm not sure which direction is the best direction to go over this bridge, but to be honest, I think both of them are pretty rubbish. Eventually, I get back onto the A35 and go back the way that I came, round the Dorchester Bypass, along the coast, through Bridport, but this time, instead of going down Chiddock Hill, I'm going up Chiddock Hill loaded which means I need to put it into manual and creep up the hill slowly. The windy, hilly A35 takes a lot longer to drive loaded than it does empty. Eventually, I get to the A30 and I follow that all the way up to the Rockbeer turn-off. I follow this B road all the way down to the end and then turn right towards the M5. And the place where I'm tipping is just along this road. I'm here now and I'm just waiting for the Weybridge. It's not long before I'm pulling on to the horrible narrow Weybridge. Get my paperwork up together and take it into the office. And once I'm weighed in, I can take the load down to the store. It's a little bit of a drive through the lanes. And when I pull in, I need to go and find somebody to take a sample and tell me where I need to tip it. Hopefully. I can tip straight away because it will be a tailboard tip as well, hopefully in here. Eventually I find somebody and they give me a kettle to go and get a sample out of the load. Once it's tested and passed, I get the go ahead to go into the shed and tip. And the chap has told me to tip in the bottom right hand corner. So I spin the truck around to get myself into a decent position. myself so that I'm at the highest point of the roof as I go back. So basically what I've done, I've angled the truck so that I can get out past here but I can lift the body up a bit higher. If I was right over to the edge I wouldn't be able to lift the body up so high. Then I go and undo all of the twist locks at the back and then I kick the bar to release it. I am then ready to start lifting the body up. I put my onboard weigher on to see how much grain is left in the trailer and I keep an eye on the height of the body to make sure that I do not hit the roof. Because wheat is quite an easy product to tip, I will only need to put the body up two or three rams for it all to come out. Once it starts rushing out, I slowly pull forwards until my onboard weigher shows that there is nothing left in the trailer. And then I pull forwards away from the pile and put the body down. I have got a bit of wheat left in the trailer, so I'm just going to sweep that out. I sweep the trailer out and I dust off all the grain that is surrounding the back door before closing it up and making sure that it's fully secure for the next load. That's it, that's done. Tell wood tip. I give the office a quick ring to confirm what I am doing next. He's busy everyone. Let's go and ring him in a minute. I head out of the shed and back down the lane towards the Weybridge. Sometimes there's not even enough room to turn around down here, but thank goodness today there is. I pull back onto the Weybridge and go and get myself weighed out in the office. Right, I've got my Weybridge tickets. 
So I'm just going to ring Keith again to see if what I think I'm doing, I'm actually doing. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, all right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've just tipped yeah. Phil going down to Kingsbridge. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye, bye. I'm still going to the place that I thought I was going to go to, which I have already looked up directions for. Unfortunately, I can't go straight there and I have to pull in for a break. Just pulled up, I rung the farmer, let him know what time I should be getting there and got some directions. It looks like it's close to a place where I've loaded before. I may have even loaded there before, but I can't remember exactly going there before. I vaguely remember going there. It might have been just somewhere near there. I'm just gonna pop in for a shower, clean myself up, and then hopefully, once I've loaded that, I'm not actually gonna get that much further. So I'm now in the shower, and I never know what to expect with Exeter's shower, but it's looking pretty good today. Looks like it might work. Hey, hey. So that's me all showered and freshened up. So it's back to the truck. I'll probably have like five minutes, and then, off to Kingsbridge. When I get back in the truck, I'll hang my wet towel up and put all my shower stuff away. While I was in there, I treated myself to some olives because I'm a bit peckish. Right, time to go because once I get this load on, I can start relaxing a bit. I head out of the services and onto the M5 going southbound. I'm not on the M5 for long as the motorway finishes just past Exeter. And when it ends, I pick up the A38 before leaving the A38 for the A384 towards Totnes. And at the junction in Totnes, I take the A381 towards Kingsbridge. Once again, I have miles of long, winding, hilly roads, but this time they are also narrow and I have a lot of potential to meet traffic coming the other way. It's now late afternoon and I have the mixture of school traffic and people finishing work but I think it's definitely worth it for this beautiful countryside. And when I pull into the farm, the farm does look vaguely familiar and I follow the farmer's instructions of where I need to go to load when I get there. Well, I have been here before, um, but I can't remember if I had to go on the Weybridge or not. I reckon I'm loading out of that shed and I reckon I'm gonna have to drive up and back up to it. The farmer turns up and I did have to weigh in, so I quickly hop onto the weigh bridge. I've weighed in, and now I need to back up to the combine harvester. It does make me a little bit nervous backing up to something that is that expensive, but the farmer is there to watch me back. I'm pretty sure that he's not going to let me back into his combine harvester. And once I'm back in position, I take my sheet off, ready to load. It feels like I've had some quite good weather today, considering we have had a very, very wet month. This is a load of oats, which can sometimes be a struggle to get the full weight on the trailer. This load of oats is going to Southampton, and I've just checked on the map. It's three and a half hours down to Southampton, and I have just over an hour and a half left. So I'm not going to get very far tonight, but at least I'm loaded, and whatever time I finish, I can just have my nine hours off and get on in the morning, hopefully. I can carry 28 tonnes 200, but on my weigher, 27 tonnes equals 28 200, as it is very out. Perfect. I let the farmer know when to stop and he has done the perfect amount, but I still hop onto the weigh bridge to check that it's right. And I've also given it a couple of shunts forward to try and get the oats flat. Oat spilled. Right, that's that done, all loaded up. Drive safely. I'm gonna try and make it as far as I possibly can on the time that I've got left. It's now six minutes to five, um, which is the perfect time to be heading back through Kingsbridge. Wonderful, wonderful. Never mind. Hopefully, I'll be lucky. 
Once again, I am heading back the way I came. I think we might need a little bit of weight transfer to get up this hill. Slope, whatever you want to call it. But I did make it out with just a dusting from the bushes. What you see as I turn this corner is the exact reason why I love doing farm work. And the video doesn't even come close to doing it justice. And I do feel incredibly lucky to see sites like these every day. And also get paid for looking at them. I head back through the narrow lanes and back on to the very narrow main road. Where I'm not able to pass other vehicles without one or other of us stopping and pulling in. I've got quite a few miles of this to go before I get out onto some decent roads. In fact, it's around 22 miles before I reach the main A38 and these slow roads are what eat up your driving time. I'm heading back the way that I came down, back through Kingsbridge, along the A381 towards Totnes and up the A385 where I get another treat for the eyes with a beautiful red sky. And you all know the saying, red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning, red sky at night, barn on fire. Well, I hope not anyway. As the sun sets and it gets dark, I get onto the A38 towards Exeter. I thought I might have ended up in a lay-by on the A38, but luckily I get to an industrial estate at Exeter and I managed to find a nice quiet parking spot. Parked up, two minutes to spare. I've had a really good day in terms of turnaround, getting stuff done. So I've I've maxed out my 10 hour drive, but I've done it in 13 and a half hours. So I have gone into a 15 hour day. So I can have nine off, which I will do so that I can get down to Southampton early. Um, I'm not sure what I got tomorrow, actually. I have had my number through, so I will check. Five, nine, eight, six. Wonder if it's anything good. Farm in Hampshire over to Exeter. Ah, and then another load of oats back to Southampton. That'd be fun. So I had two options for my tea tonight, but I have decided to go for the homemade stir fry that I made yesterday. But I'm going to put a little bit of rice in with it because it doesn't have any noodles. So it's just basically veg and chicken. I didn't have any noodles. I thought I did have some, but I didn't do a half and then I can have the other half with my other stir fry. I need some pegs or something to peg stuff like this up. And I'll just wait patiently for it to cook. Right, so my dinner is cooked. And to be fair, it doesn't really look like much, but it tastes really nice. So that's me all settled down in bed. Um, it's about half past eight. Uh, so quite early, but I do need to be on the road for half past four tomorrow as it's two and a half hours over to Southampton. And I was up super early this morning. My alarm went off at half past three and I got up at quarter to four. So yeah, quite tired. Thanks for watching.